believers while the other video I recorded is being uploaded now via my other mobile phone I want to record another message which I'm doing now about replacing breadcrumbing and it's about the crease as all my videos are as said it for coming months I only talk about the crease first I want to address the parents who are watching this when your child hears about Santa Claus, Santa Claus or those other parties of pagan origins going on don't just shut down their participation why because they're, they're kids they want to be, get along with other children and other children do have fun and do have uh, great memories that are fun in those parties even though it will have a psychological detrimental effect on them later on yes you want them to be free from those side effects so what do you do you replace it with something better so instead of telling them according to the myth Santa Claus is coming if you behave well speak out the good in your child if you have a little girl for your uh, three or four year old called Sarah Tell Sarah, Sarah, you are a wonderful lady. Sarah, wherever you come, people carry you on both hands. Sarah, I'm glad you're my daughter. Oh, Sarah, I can see great things happening to you. Speak well into your, speak well being into your child. Look your child in the eye and speak well being into them. Why? Because if you don't do that, they will seek the well being from the world. And the world has no well being to offer. We know that. So, look the child in the eye repeatedly, every day, and speak well into them, okay? And gently sow greatness in your children, as you'll see later in life. No matter what they go through, no matter how much blunders they make, they will, whatever you've sown will work out. But if you go around um, cursing your children, dumping on them, suggesting harm on them, blaming them, for your own failures to process things from your own past if you do that then oh dear i want to keep this video clean then please repent as soon as possible and really go into therapy because um, you're dangerous straight up but okay so speak well-being into your children and for husbands husbands listen to me speak youth and greatness into your wife look her in the eye and do it. Darling, I'm glad I married you. Oh, darling, we're going to spend great days together. Darling, our youth is near to where we're happy, joyful, blessed young people all the days of our lives. Decree and declare permanent youth on both of you. Decree and declare health on you. Together and look her in the eye when you do it. Wives, do the same to your husband. If your husband's name is Tyrone, I uh, know uh, whatever the name of your husband is, I'm going to use an example of Tyrone. Uh, just in brain say, Tyrone, I'm very happy with you. Tyrone, it's going to be great. Tyrone, everything's going to work out fine. Tyrone, we, we got this. God, God got us. This is, going, this is going well. Speak well-being into your husband, wives. Don't just stand there and expect things magically just unfold for you. Even in Disney movies, it doesn't work that way. Okay? Okay. Do that to your children. I already told about children and children. Not children. Um, do, I'm talking to people. I'm talking about to everyone now. If you have parents, do this to your parents. Whether you're still living at your parents' house or your, your grown men or women are at your parents' house, do the same to your parents. And if your parents are reprobates, that's on them. Don't blame you, you, yourself for that. That's them. That's their bitterness against God. God. Not, it's not to do with you. Then you shake them off you and you continue in your life. Let them remain behind with their filthy curses. And if you have children, grown children, who have, pers who have chosen the dark side, that's not on you. Even if you were terrible to them, at some point, they persisted in relief instead of seeking deliverance. So continue moving forward. All right. If, you're a, if you have employees or people under your supervision at work or in whatever you're doing, speak well-being into them, okay? At work, if you're dealing with other beliefs, you should do it also. If you're dealing with worldlings, I won't recommend you to do it because worldlings tend to get the wrong idea. 
they tend to think you're flirting with them or that you're uh, doing black magic on them or that you want something from them so do it behind just decree and declare send peace out of you in general but when you're dealing with worldlings don't do that directly with them to their face because they can't they can't participate in it because first of all they're not born again and secondly they're not renewed in their mind and they don't have the mindset to operate in abundance okay so this video is about replacing breadcrumbing breadcrumbing is a concept used use on youtube often and also outside of it and it refers to a type of psychological abuse that narcissists often use on their victims um breadcrumbing comes down to the following i want to like put it here Breadcrumbing simply means that someone promises you a great outcome and they give you little bits of what appears to be the great outcome just to keep you hungry and interested in the relationship. But eventually, nothing happens. For example, you have a man proposing to a woman and she really wants this fairy tale uh, Disney wedding. And the guy tells her, you know what, we can't really do that right now. Uh, I don't have a lot of money, so you know what? In the, uh, just let's get to a simple ceremony in the, and, we, and, and later we'll have a great honeymoon. Oh, she's excited. She goes to the simple ceremony and she thinks, okay, she packs her bags to go on honeymoon. He says, no, 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 maybe two months later when I get my paycheck, then two months later comes, then he just takes her out on expensive dinner and then he says, no, 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 we can't go on honeymoon yet. And before you know it, five years have moved on and they never went on to that great honeymoon. Or let's do another example. You are at, you you join the church, and this pastor, he is a millionaire. He's multiple businesses. He is even invited by gov foreign governments to give advice. And you think, whoa, this man of God is is very far. I want to be like him. And he tells you, no, no, no. You need to learn. So he begins to teach you stuff in classes on how to become like him. Year after year. You get compliments that you've improved, that you're progressing, but you never reach the position he has. And at the same time, he is benefiting from your service. He's breadcrumbing you, giving you just enough to keep you interested, to trick you into thinking that better is coming, but the better never comes. Now, breadcrumbing is something society does to us all the time. It's how the world operates. With breadcrumbing, it's actually another word. It's, it's actually another word for um, both love bombing and future faking. I've explained love bombing and future faking in another video. That's the one that's uploading now. You can wa uh, watch that. The title of the video is "Society's Narcissistic Decrees: Love Bombing and Future Faking Versus Christ-Centered Enforcement." Watch that video. Love bombing and future faking, both of them together, is called breadcrumbing. Breadcrumbing symbolizes really what it is. Breadcrumbs are tiny pieces of bread that ants and insects eat. You, as human being, you need a full loaf of bread to fill you. So if someone gave you breadcrumbs, yeah, you would taste a little bit of bread, and your hunger is still a tiny bit, but you're so hungry because you don't get the full loaf. So society promises you a loaf of bread, but you get crumbs on your way. And every time you ask yourself, uh, when is the full manifestation coming? Oh, it's coming, it's coming, this is your year. But it never comes. There are pagan churches that talk about revival, revival, and say, this is the year of revival. Things are going to become better in our communities. 2003, this is the year, 2004, 2005, then it became 2018, 2019. And this year, they can't get away with saying this, but they've been saying for more than a decade, this is the year. And those um, uh, churchgoers that go to that church year in, year out, but things get worse in their communities, and they don't realize, hold on a minute, we've been fed these prophecies by these anointed men of God that revival is coming, but why doesn't it ever come? In 2002, when it said 2003 will be the year, 2003 came, it didn't happen, and later another prophet came and said, it's because you guys don't believe well. This is because there's too much sin in your life. You need to, uh, uh, you need to overcome sin, which is not biblical. You cling on to Christ, and sin is worked out of you. That's how it goes. The whole idea of overcoming sin is self-effort, and self-effort is sin. Sin comes down to self-effort. So how can you use self-effort to get rid of self-effort? It's not going to work. You cling on to Christ by relying on Him, and sin is purged out of you.
Sin is self-reliance. Self-reliance has to be pushed out of you so you can walk in God's strength. Okay? So they tell you, oh, it's, you guys have too much sin. And he's going to mention all the sins, all the scandals. And now you need to, everyone's saying, you need to repent, repent. 2004 comes. Again, there's too much sin. And an atheist may come by a few times, then quote on a minute. Whilst these pastors saying, is it even biblical? And he's been saying this, they've been saying this for years. Don't those people realize they're being, that they're being lied to? From time to time, something lovely happens in the community, and they take credit for it, but the real revival never comes. Look, breadcrumbing is how society works. Breadcrumbing is how the world operates. And all those pagan feasts you see out there are breadcrumbing. That's all it is. It's demons breadcrumbing the masses. Now, as, up, as believers, our source is Christ, the bread of life. So we have the real source of power, joy, strength, safety, and all of that. So we enforce all of that on the earth. Those that oppose, that's on them. The earth is the Lord's. The earth is created by the Most High for the Most High's glory through his people. Okay? So that the earth belongs to the Heavenly Father, and the earth does not exist for worldlings to persist in relief and dumping, playing God. No, the earth, all this around, and its fullness exists so the Heavenly Father is magnified through his people. So, we enforce, because we have power. Those who don't follow Christ, those who don't obey the Heavenly Father, they don't have any power. So, for them to want you to comply with them, they need to trick you. And here's the thing, because they don't ha have any long-term goods to offer to you, they have to fake it as if they have something to offer to you. That's what society does, but you need to comply. And when you don't get what they suggest onto you, they have to blame you for it. So, as parents, as husbands, as wives, as grown children, as colleagues, as leaders or as um, members of our communities, let's replace breadcrumbing with Christ sent enforcement. It's not going to be easy. Rolfings will resist because they cling on to the, the crumbs that society throws at them. You replace it. Replace it. Be at peace.